Hey gangs, and welcome back to the Augustus Maximus channel and welcome back to the world of Hearts of Light 4, No Step Back, and today we will be playing as Communist Poland because I had this grand idea. I had this grand idea for a very interesting strategy. I'm sort of replicating a France, but with Poland. And I was uh, thinking yesterday about what kind of role exactly would uh, would France play if um, if this was sort of a sort of an RPG let's say someone an MMO or a, sort of a MOBA game or something like that and I decided that France if played by the player usually in historical settings is the tank of the group because your essential role is to defend against the onslaught of the Axis armies and so I thought Let's try that with Poland, because um, obviously you play as France, you're the tank, and the United Kingdom is like the DPS or whatever. Whereas with Poland, we could essentially perform the role of the tank, um, build up this giant, giant network of fort lines, entire air, everything like that. And just let uh, let the Soviets essentially tank. Uh, let the Soviets do the damage. Let the Soviets essentially roll the axes all the way back to Berlin, while we tank the initial onslaught with uh, with fortifications, with defensive oriented bonuses, with everything like that. The issue is that to ally the Soviets as Poland, you have to go communist. There's no. Um, there isn't really a convenient way to do it, and I haven't really played as communist Poland ever, um, so this is going to be an interesting learning experience. Um, but I do know that uh, to properly play Poland as a communist nation and to ally with the Soviets in this new DLC, this new patch, this new version, whatever, we sort of have to break the game. We sort of have to exploit the game in just the right way to get um, to get the Soviets on side without becoming a puppet of them. Isn't so that what we are going to be doing today? Completely abusing the system and breaking the game, just so I can try out a very strange and um, well unreasonable strategy, you could say. But hey, that's what this channel is all about. One thing that's really cool about uh, going communist as Poland is the peasant strike mechanic. And because it plays sort of similarly, obviously, to the like Spanish Civil War or the Second Russian Civil War, where you essentially have to uh, seize individual territories or whatever sort of ferment uprisings in them. And then during the Civil War, as you can see, we actually gained control of the territories that we um, that we sort of uh, you know fermented these these uprising, these peasant strikes in, and everything like that. And I really like those. I really like those mechanics. Um, these like region control, small little mini game before the main conflict, um, and it's something um, that I w I wish they would sort of retroactively maybe add to some other nations and their civil wars or conflicts. I r I especially like, for example, the um, for the United Kingdom the mechanic of when going uh, with Oswald, Oswald Mosley, the Blackshirt Marches. And that's something that should be implemented just to vanilla. For any kind of nation that's trying to go fash, uh, you should have that little minigame where you essentially do those, um, do those like marches. Militarist marches, you could call it fascist marches, whatever you want to call it. But I love that system and I really like this one because if you are going to have a civil war and it's not going to be like right off the bat, like in the early game. You should at least have some flavor. You should at least have some flavor attached to it. For example, the Second American Civil War is nicely done. The Second Russian Civil War is amazing. Well, you know, the mechanic and that <laughs> and that the Russian thing is a little bit strange and can lead to some very bad border gore, but um um you know, just uh, just a re-implementation of these new superior mechanics that actually do add some roleplay value and some flavor and just some storytelling while being relatively interesting when it comes to the actual gameplay and allows you to focus on different fa the different things. For example, with this Polish thing, we could either focus on gaining all the generals, gaining a lot of equipment, or focusing on the territories alone and basically relying on us uh, rolling better generals down the line, stuff like that. You know, it's um, it's very simple, 
but um, I'm sure it's not simple to implement and everything like that it would take some time but I really like it it's really cool and I wish they would retroactively add this sort of stuff for basically any kind of like ideology flip or civil war or, or anything like that basically it um, I think it's really cool and uh, I really like it. That's one part about this DLC that I think is absolutely wonderful. All these different ideological conflicts and everything like that. It's absolutely brilliant. And here we go. Here's the exploit time. So we're just about to flip communist. And this will essentially, yeah, this will flip us. Communist, there we go. But now we have to pick the leader. And here we pick the leader that either is the independent communist or the Stalinist pro-Soviet communist. We're going to go with the independent one. And that essentially allows us only to pick the independent communist path, which locks us out of joining with the USSR. But we are just, and yeah, nobody cares, we're just going to join the Comintern right now. And then pick the focus that <laughs> essentially locks us out of it. Which, I don't know if this is an oversight or, for, or if it's supposed to be breakable like this. But the moment you pick, I, I, you know, it's obvious. The moment you pick the independent communist leader, you should be locked out of going with the common turn. But they didn't program it that way. Probably it, the the whole like locking out decision is probably tied to the focus, not the leader. And so here we are. We're in the common turn while being independent communists. And, you know, that's uh, overpowered, kind of. And it's time to deal with the Baltics. As per usual, whenever you're playing within the uh, No Step Back DLC, a lot of time, all the Baltic countries just get it, man. It's like, if you're playing with Spain, always Portugal gets it. If you're playing with Poland, always the Baltics get it. You know, it's... Um, it's uh, and we can get Liberia later on, which is kind of interesting. But um, one thing that's actually kind of maybe a little bit disappointing about this, uh, we are essentially playing an independent communist path. So the intended playthrough of this whole game situation, this path essentially, is that you go down the independent communist path and then you face off both against the Germans, the, uh, the Allies, and also the Comintern which it, f based on the focuses that you get and that's hmm, the actual benefits of going down the uh, going down the independent communist path is that you gain a little bit a tiny whiny bit of an industry bonus and you get really good bonuses when it comes to fighting on your core territory and that's absolutely brilliant however well if you want to fight against both the both the Axis and the Comintern, you're gonna need a whole bunch more than just a couple, you know, what was it, like 7% defense and attack on core territory, essentially. You're gonna need like 20% at least because, well, even then, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult. So this independent communist path, I can't really see it being viable um, when it comes to playing it, how the developers probably attend intended you to play it, whereas where you essentially just, you know, play a standard Poland game where you defend both against the Axis and the Comintern, that's that's not feasible. That's just not feasible. We are, you know, this uh, this um, whole situation I'm playing where you essentially break the game a little bit just to join up with Stalin so you can then defend against the Axis. That's the whole strategy I'm going for here. Um, I think that's the only viable way to actually play Communist Poland because that's the only viable way of actually joining up with Stalin and uh, it's kind of a shame that they um, that they sort of gate gatekeep you out of uh, out of going with Stalin that you need um, to become a puppet of Stalin to actually do anything with him which is uh, is a little bit strange because if you consider any other nation that has to become a puppet pr prior to No Step Back, it was only Spain, and even in Spain, the only reason you would even become a puppet of the USSR was if you did the focuses that eased the civil war by quite a large margin. But you didn't need to do those. So one thing that maybe they should have done instead is that maybe if the Polish Civil War is really difficult, you can ask the uh, ask the Soviets for direct involvement, and then you become a puppet of them. But um, yeah, it seems like the <laughs> it seems like the independent communist bonuses just don't give you enough of a bonus. There's no incentive to just go against Stalin. You know, just let's just break the game and go with Stalin anyway. Because uh, well, I don't know it's available, so let's do it. You know, it's relatively interesting. We're about to about to essentially puppet Liberia, but we also 
have an actual spirit in a whole section in the in the focus tree that is focused on anti imperialism, anti colonialism, everything like that, but <laughs> we essentially now have an African colony. Which on one on the one hand that's absolutely brilliant, you know, you, you you never quite see these focuses, um, well, you don't really see them that much, whereas this this focus around sort of this ret gaining, like, colonies overseas at all, um, when it comes to, like, the non-major non powers, you don't necessarily see it that often, um, you see it with Spain and everyone like that, but, um, you don't see it with, uh, you don't really see it with like these <laughs> minor powers, not necessarily minor powers, like, but like middle powers of Europe. You don't really see it, so it's kind of cool. It's a little bit hypocritical, you know, on the one hand, anti imperialism on the other hand. But, you know, it's a different thing if we call it a different thing, you know, playing semantics and everything like that. So, um, we are liberating the workers of Liberia, and that's that definitely puts a different spin on the whole situation, so, yeah, completely anti-colonialism, everything like that, comrade, we are just, uh, yeah, we're just uh, going down um, the liberation path, absolutely, that's why we joined up with Stalin, after all. This is going to be very interesting, the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, a toast to our new German friends indeed. However, <laughs> the Germans immediately after doing the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact go down the Danzinger War focus. So whether they actually declare war here or whether they are even able to declare war here is going to be very interesting because if you um, if you watched the uh, the Iron Wolf Lithuania video, you you saw that the Soviets uh, were not especially happy with uh, with our with the Polish situation and, and Lithuania joining the Axis, controlling a whole bunch of Poland, and, the, and then Lithuania could essentially deny um, deny the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact enforcement. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, this situation develops, because we're in the Axis, we're not in the Axis, we're in the Comintern, and um, technically speaking, I think think I think if we deny or maybe we don't even have a choice of denying um, the the dancing or war situation because it's essentially an enforcement of the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact but uh, I'm not entirely sure how this works um, because in some versions of the game some older versions of the game if you played if you actually control control those territories and you join the common turn those territories were all, would automatically flip to the Germans, but if you controlled, and if you controlled Eastern Poland, but you were in the Axis, it doesn't matter what sort of nation you played, they would automatically flip to the Soviets, if the two of them weren't at war already. Uh, but that was such a long time ago, um, that I'm not entirely sure how it works right now. Maybe, because we're in the common turn, it's gonna automatically flip? For some reason, they have a war goal? Why would they have a war goal on the, on the, what? Why? <laughs> they have a war goal and a non-aggression pact? Why would the Germans have a war goal on the Soviets? That's... W just why? W why? Is it because of us? But it's our territory, it's not the Soviet... What's going on here? This is a very strange state of affairs. And um, they have a non -aggr So supposedly, I guess what happened was that the... The... Um, Somehow, for some reason, maybe they uh, signed the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, and then uh, maybe the Ger maybe oh yeah, maybe the Germans asked for Western Poland, and the Soviets denied it because it goes to them. But it actually we should have been the ones to get asked. But maybe it was the Soviets. Maybe it works like it. It did back in the day, but the Germans, but the Soviets just denied the request. So the Germans automatically got a war goal on the, on the Soviets because we are in the common turn. So they get the yeah yeah they get the request, sort of ignoring us. Um, so they get the war goal immediately after signing the non-aggression pact. This is very interesting. This is incredibly interesting if it works the way I think it works. But they still haven't done Danziger War because we haven't gotten a pop-up about Danziger War. Huh. You see, this is the sort of interesting stuff you discover when you try and, you know, when you break the game a little bit. Because if we were now playing as the dependent, quote-unquote, dependent communist path, <laughs> uh, where we become a puppet of the USSR, then I think the Germans would have automatically gotten that stuff. Or the, or the Soviets would have been more eager to give um, Western Poland to 
to the Axis or something. Dancing Guru, here we go. Okay, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be very interesting. So Dancing Guru will remain Dansk, indeed. And, uh, well, let's see. What does this mean? And will they declare war? No, but they have a war goal on us all of a sudden. Okay. And let's see if they actually go through with it, because I don't think they even can, because they, they just signed the non-aggression pact, and then got into war goal on the Soviets, and then got into war goal on me. This is such a strange state of affairs. Okay, so the German AI is probably extremely confused right now, um, which usually happens, but uh, it happened this time because we sort of, you know, we're a little bit nosy when it comes to the game and didn't really pick the correct path for the correct leader, blah blah blah, you know. Upsetting it maybe a little bit, but uh let's just uh, let's just wait around and see how the how the situation develops further. Because if they go after us it's gonna be kind of a bummer, but who cares? Um if they go I think the moment we know that we are in the in the clear is uh, when um, the Germans decide to go on the war path to the west against the Allies, uh, because um, German pressure towards the Benelux. Okay, so the AI couldn't <laughs> couldn't get the, the Danzig stuff. Maybe it got a bit confused, so it automatically went towards the west. Okay, okay, yeah, World War Two definitely. So well. We sort of confused the AI a tiny bit, but, uh, well, we managed to get away sort of scot-free, so that's absolutely wonderful, and it means that we do have a couple of more years of build-up, so uh, let's go. While we're at it, let's reform the Commonwealth, absolutely brilliant, the Commonwealth of Socialist Republics. Now that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's actually kind of a cool name. The flag's a bit, you know, disgusting looking and absolutely terrible. But, um, well, you really couldn't have gotten a better flag. It's like, ugh. But, um, no, well, whatever. Um, it just means that, well, we do have a whole bunch of core territory inside of Russia. We also have a bunch of core territory. No, I'm not gonna. Why would I release them? We have a, bon a whole bunch of core territory inside the Germans as well. But inside of Estonia, which is kind of a bummer. But, um, hey, that's just. I think there's a focus for that, actually, to core Estonia as well. But, um, but yeah, so we are now sort of a better color, because that green is really harsh on the eyes. It's sort of a very, <laughs> not exactly the nicest color, but hey, there we go. So, well, uh, we are the Polish, well, the, the Commonwealth of uh, Socialist Republics, which, you know, just rolls off the tongue. And finally, here come the Germans. I was starting to worry that we confused the AI a little bit too much, because they were kind of stalling. I mean... They had a, there we go, Operation Barbarossa. I mean, I love these, like, vanilla, uh, vanilla super event mods, because it's always just a little bit, you know, a bit more epic than the usual pop-ups that you get in vanilla how you for. But, uh, yeah, we're not gonna join the war immediately, mostly because I want to see if the, um, if, uh, the, the Soviets are gonna be in big trouble. Um, they really don't like us that much, but we are still in the faction, so it doesn't technically matter. Um... Because the Stalin or Mr. H, they never throw you out of the factions. Even if they really hate you, the neither the communists nor the fascists never throw you out of the faction. Only the Democrats ever do, in fact, which is kind of, you know, a strange situation, but whatever. Um, so much about tolerance and everything, but they, they're the only ones to throw you out of the faction. But uh, even if you're a communist in the axis, it's still completely fine. And if you're fascist in the commentary, it's still completely fine because they don't... Uh, neither communists nor fascists don't care about like world tension or anything like that, or wrong ideology or something like that. Just don't. Um, so um, as long as you're in, you're in. Doesn't really matter. Let's just see how Mr. S is able to handle this whole southern front. Because if he's able to handle it relatively well, we're gonna join him. If he gets completely steamrolled, then that's going to be a big issue. Another thing is that we're just technically stretching out the front a lot wider. Um, so that the Germans aren't able to just completely focus on the Romanian front and uh, they don't get into Western Russia that easily. Because one thing that's actually really cool about this strategy is that we, by creating this sort of faux Maginot line and this really defensive, kind of essentially fortress Poland, by creating fortress Poland, Western Russia doesn't get invaded. And apart from, I think, the Benelux, the low countries essentially, Western Russia is one of the easiest places to invade for Germany because it's so so susceptible to uh, like medium tanks and everything like that so 
Let's just uh, let's just chill out here and let's see how well the Russians do. But I think they're actually handling the situation well. They pushed into Romania and they're able to hold back the advances. They're not necessarily attacking all that successfully, but the the Germans are so extremely powerful in this in this version of the game, especially they do gain a lot of buffs against the uh, against the Soviets once they go full Barbarossa mode. That it um, it's actually rather rather you know that's a big success for the for the Soviets to push that far into Romania against the Germans or the Axis in general. The Allies still haven't done a thing, but um, that's uh, kind of to be expected. They you know they're even worse than they were before in this latest in this latest version uh, version which is you know kind of sad but uh yeah let's just join the war the 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 axes don't seem to be performing all that well let's try to go for a little push here and uh let's see how well we actually manage this whole situation okay so two years later fortress poland still very much stands um but uh yeah, completely, you know, unassailable. We are essentially, you know, just the biggest <laughs> FU to the axis that ever stood. So many forts, so many radars, so much air over our airspace, everything like that. But uh, the front hasn't moved at all, and the Allies haven't done a damn thing, so... That's, uh, it's kind of a, yeah, they ha still haven't even cleared out Africa, which is, uh, well, they did actually, you know, put Vichy France inside the axis, so that's another whole bunch of enemies we have to worry about with the Soviets but uh, so the Soviets managed to push into Romania we managed to take care of Eastern Poland and I am oh yeah but but uh, Iraq of course yeah Iraq is an important okay let's mm -hmm. yeah definitely yeah that's uh, we also got Iran, uh, Iran on side because of some focus the Soviets have so I guess that's sort of cool we also got Finland because uh, the USSR just kept for some reason they just kept um, justifying war goals on Finland which I thought that that bug would have been fixed but I guess whatever um, but yeah um, the, also overall the strategy that I had in mind is a complete and utter failure because while we did manage to we, we actually did prove that that uh, Poland if you're defensive enough and if you join up with Stalin it's actually kind of a breeze um, it's not completely easy but as long as you you know put down those forts put down those radars AEM placements, you have good defensive divisions, you have uh, the good, um, you have the grand p battle plan, bonuses, it's actually rather easy, well, but you won't ever actually win, because we're just sitting here, and nothing's going on, and uh, the Soviets aren't exactly rolling them back all the way to Berlin like they thought they would, uh, because the, for some reason the new Soviet AI sometimes it just explodes and just overruns the entirety of Europe, uh, Europe and sometimes you just sort of just you just sit there and you wonder what the hell is happening what the hell is going on why haven't they pushed at all and so it's just a tiny bit disappointing but uh, nice attempt I guess okay so one year later I'd actually decided to push myself look at all of those casualties basically the worst war as the Polish I've ever had and um, so, taking into consideration the independent Polish path, I think it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It actually was insanely easy to defend against the Germans. And the initial push against the Germans was actually relatively easy as well, because you have so much defense and attack on core territory. Uh, you're uh, virtually unassailable once you have a couple of forts down, you have a decent air force, de decent de defensive divisions, everything like that. And a couple of the Soviet divisions hanging out around Poland actually helped quite a bit. The big issue I have is that you don't get much of anything else. Um, comparing an independent communist path to the Habsburg path, let's say, um, you get Czechoslovakia, you get Hungary, you get um, you get even potentially Germany as an ally just by clicking one button. You know, you have so many bonuses, so much, so much flavor. You have so many interactions with the surrounding countries. You have so many just division bonuses, attack, defense, cavalry attack, defense. Everything like that, you don't have to go through a civil war, it's very quick, it's very immediate, it's fast, it's everything like that. Whereas with the communist path, you have to go through a civil war, you don't get much territory, only the Baltics, and even then you don't get course immediately, you only get course through the decision that every single Polish Polish path gets. And everything like that, and even, the, even then we broke the game essentially, and um, you gain a little bit of compliance, you do gain Liberia, 
but that isn't much that's like you know five extra divisions from your puppet on the um defending your territory which is fine defense is you know defending against possible opponents as handled by this path that's absolutely brilliant but from the flavor of the of the focus tree you would think that you would get actually some like revolution abilities you know something to spark up re a revolt inside the enemy and everything like that but instead it's a little bit of compliance a little bit of core defense and um, which you know like it's not actually even all that much core defense for example the french communists and um, the french independent communists they gain what was it like 10% attack and defense on core territory. We gain like 7% throughout like two focuses, which actually take takes like three focuses to complete or something like that. It's um no the the leader gives us a whole bunch and then a focus gives us a whole bunch. But other than that, you don't get a lot of industrial bonuses. You don't get a lot of bonuses when it comes to your army. That would be basically um, unattainable by other by other paths, you do gain a recovery rate, 15%, which is insanely good for defense, but again, it's good for defense, and that's about it. The issue is, what do you do after you're done defending? You can barely hold on. Well, the axes are insanely powerful, so that's, you know, that's taken account into, but this path sort of wants you to defend both against the axes and the Soviets. That's just undoable. That's just not... That's just not handleable right after you go through a civil war, lose a whole bunch of your industry, focus like an entire year on just a civil war, just becoming this independent communist nation. And then you're supposed to handle both the Axis and the Comintern? And also the Allies? Like, what the hell? Like, you're... Um, I guess they were trying to make some sort of like a path maybe similar to the Anarchists in, in, um, in Spain. But that's not necessarily <laughs> that's not necessarily doable all that much with Poland, and the big difference is that obviously as Spain you're safe. Nobody's gonna attack you. There's no like immediate threat at all. You can basically pick your battle, pick your battles, and just decide on your own time when to do what. Uh, whereas with Poland, the, the Axis are coming, the, the Russians are coming, and everything like that. So. Mm, uh, the other paths for Poland are definitely, definitely better. Um, even even the default path is probably a bit better. Because at least you don't have to go through a civil war to get it. But um, not entirely sure, obviously. Uh, the Habsburg path was definitely uh, was definitely better. You do actually gain some um, some options when playing with that. You do gain Czechoslovakia as a core. You do gain the entirety of Hungary, which is easily you know um, you can easily integrate them. You have it, and they're a decent nation. They're a very decent puppet. Uh, you get some you really get aluminium resources from them. Whereas the only benefit of this path was joining up with Stalin, so we were safe from Stalin, so to speak. But even then, the only the only option of for doing that was to break the game and go with a very different unattended uh, unintended path, making us like doubly as strong as you were supposed to be. But even doubly as strong, well, it's good for defense, that's for sure. The Germans didn't step one foot on Polish soil, so that's something. But still, it's uh, I guess uh, maybe I expected a little bit more. And that's why I'm a little bit sad about it. But ultimately, I'm sad that the Soviets didn't do a damn thing. <laughs> the Soviets didn't do a damn thing. Um, they ba they're still barely managing to push into into Romania, and that's just that's just insane to me. Um, that's just insane to me. And look at the Germans. Look at the Germans. They're still holding on. They're still holding on. So it's uh, man. If you went with the Germans, that could have been that could have been a whole whole heap of difference. So next playthrough as Poland we're gonna try to go with the Germans and we'll see how things um, go from there but um, we're about to win this, uh, win this whole situation very very shortly. Even the Allies completely terrible. Vichy France still exists. It took them it took them basically until 1944 to do any sort of meaningful D-Day which would have been historical but you know usually they D-Day at least okay Bulgaria well that's at least something but uh, still still kind of terrible um, anyway so um, thanks kings for watching this was miserable and um, see you next time on the Augustus Maximus channel